So let me ask on this topic, because I put out that I'm talking to you. I got way more questions than I can deal with, but what pops to mind is a question somebody asked on Reddit, I think, is uh, please ask uh, Dr. Wolfram, uh, what are the specs of the computer running the universe? So we're, we're talking about specs of hardware and software uh, yes. for simulations of a large scale thing. What about a scale that is comparative to something that eventually leads to the two of us talking on a balcony. Right, right, right. So so actually, I, I did try to estimate that. And, and we actually have to go a couple more stages before we can really get to that answer because because we're we're talking about um, uh, this this thing. Um, you know, this is what happens when you, when you build these abstract systems and you're trying to explain the universe. They're uh, quite a number of levels deep, so to speak. Um, but... Uh, the, um, you, mean, uh, you mean conceptually or like literally? Because you're talking about very no, small conceptual. objects and there's yeah. 10 to the it's, 120 it's, something. Yeah, right. Number. It's, it's, it, it is conceptually deep. And one of the things that's happening sort of structurally in this project is, you know, there were ideas. There's another layer of ideas. There's another layer of ideas. To get to the different things that correspond to physics, they're just different layers of ideas. And they are... Um, you know, it's actually probably, if anything, getting harder to explain this project because I'm realizing that the fraction of way through that I am so far yeah. and explaining this to you is less than, than you know, it might be because, because we know more now, you know, in the, every every week, basically, we know a little bit more. And like Those are just layers on the initial fundamental yes, structure. Yes, but the layers are, you know, you, you might be asking me, you know, how do we get... Uh, you know, the difference between fermions and bosons, the difference between particles that can be all in the same state and particles that exclude each other, okay? Last three days, we've kind of figured that out, okay? But, um, and it's very interesting. It's very cool. Um, and it's very... Uh, and th those are some kind of properties at a certain level, layer of abstraction on the yes, hypograph. Yes, yes. And there's, a, and there's, but the layers of abstraction are kind of, they're compounding. They're stacking up. So it's, and, it's and difficult, but... It, but okay, but but, this never, thing, but the specs nevertheless remain the okay, same. The, the specs underneath. So I, I have an estimate. So the, the question is, what are the units? So we've got these different fundamental constants about the world. So one of them is the speed of light, which is the so the thing that's always the same in all these different ways of thinking about the universe is the notion of time, because time is computation. And so there's an elementary time, which is sort of the 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 amount of time that we ascribe to elapsing in a in a single computational step yeah okay so that's the elementary time so then there's that's an a elementary parameter or whatever that it's, that's a constant it's whatever we define it yeah. to be because i mean we we don't you know i mean it's all relative right it doesn't yes, matter it doesn't yeah. matter what it is because yeah. we could be it could be slow and it's, uh, it's just a number which which we use to convert that to seconds so to speak because we are experiencing things and we say this amount of time has elapsed. So but we're speak. within this thing. Absolutely. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't it, matter. Right. right. But what does matter is the ratio, what, what we can, uh, the ratio of the spatial distance and this hypergraph to this, uh, to this moment of time. Again, that's an arbitrary thing, but we measure that in meters per second, for example, and that ratio is the speed of light. So the ratio of the elementary distance to the elementary time is the speed of light. Okay? Perfect. And so there's another... There are two other levels of this, okay? So there is a thing which we can talk about, uh, which is the maximum entanglement speed, which is a thing that happens at, at another level in this whole sort of story of how these things get constructed. Um, that's a sort of maximum speed in quantum in the space of quantum states, just as the speed of light is a maximum speed in physical space. This is a maximum speed in the space of quantum states. There's another level which is associated with what we call ruleal space, which is a another one of these maximum speeds. We'll get to this. Um, so these are limitations on the system that are able to capture the kind of physical universe we'll, which we live in. The quantum they're, mechanical. They are the, inevitable features yeah. of having a a rule that has only a finite amount of information in the rule. So long as you have a rule that only involves a a, a bounded amount, a limited amount of it only involving a limited number of elements, limited number of relations, it is inevitable that there are these speed constraints. We knew about the one for speed of light. We didn't know about the one for maximum entanglement speed, which is actually something that is possibly measurable, particularly in black hole systems and things like this. But anyway, this is long, long story short. You're asking what the processing specs of the universe, of the, of the sort of computation of the universe. There's a question of even what are the units 
of some of these measurements, okay? So the units I'm using are Wolfram language instructions per second, okay? <laughs> because you gotta have some, yeah. you know, what, what <laughs> computation are you doing? <laughs> there gotta be some kind of frame of reference. Right, guy. right. Yeah. So uh, and because it turns out in the end, there will be, there's sort of an arbitrariness in the language that you use to describe the universe. So in those terms, I think it's like 10 to the 500 Wolfram language operations per second, wow. I think. Is the, um, I think it's of that order. Uh, you know, it, but <laughs> so that's the scale of the computation. Right. What about memory? If, if there's an interesting thing to say about storage and memory. Well, there's a question of how many sort of atoms of space might there be? You right. know, maybe 10 to the 400. We don't know exactly how to estimate these numbers. I mean, this is, this is based on some, some, I would say, somewhat rickety way of estimating things. Uh, you know, when there start to be able to be experiments done, if we're lucky, there will be experiments that can actually nail down some of these numbers. And uh, because of computation reducibility, there's not much hope for very efficient compression, like very uh, efficient representations of this question, atom space. Good question. I mean, there's probably certain things, you know, the fact that we can deduce anything. Okay, the question is, how deep does the reducibility go? Right. Okay, and I keep on being surprised that it's a lot deeper than I thought. Okay, and so um, one of the things is that that there's a question of sort of how much of the whole of physics do we have to be able to get in order to explain certain kinds of phenomena? Like, for example, if we want to study quantum interference, do we have to know what an electron is? Turns out I thought we did. Turns out we don't. I thought to know what energy is, we would have to know what electrons were. We don't. So you can there's get a, a lot of really powerful shortcuts. Right. There's a, there's a bunch of sort of bulk information about the world. The, the thing that I'm excited about last few days, okay, is um, uh, the idea of fermions versus bosons, fundamental idea that, I mean, it's the, the reason we have matter that doesn't just self-destruct is because of the exclusion principle that means that two well, electrons can never be in the same quantum state. 